Hello everyone, welcome to Canteen Cup. My name is Scott, and it is a, it is a Tuesday morning. Temperatures drop quite a bit. Skies are cloudy. It's supposed to rain cats and dogs a little bit later in the morning, which is why I'm shooting this now, uh, because <laughs> it's gonna rain. And then my fields get muddy, then I can't work. However, I did get a bunch of work done yesterday. Um, the stuff I had up by the house, I cut and stacked. And then I went, and as you can see, I, I got some more. And so I'll do that tomorrow. I can do that when the ground's still a little wet. So that's not a, not a big deal. Uh, we are making progress. Uh, we're getting to the point where I can start working on the, the dirt, so to speak. Uh, I just got this little area down here I have to untangle. Let me, uh, let me show you. Uh, this little area down here are the last two areas I really have to untangle. There's a big hardwood tree back there, which I'm gonna cut up and use for firewood. So moving along, but I, I wanted to take a moment and talk about, you know, things that I've discovered during this pandemic. And while we are, we're in a soft lockdown, uh, there are some lessons learned and I think I, I, I want to pass them along just to give you guys idea. And um, one of them was I don't store enough diesel uh, on my property. I'm not too bad, but I need to get some more. And, and the reason for that is when I'm home, I've got plenty to do. And so I'm using my tractor a whole lot more than when I'm working and using the tractor. So uh, while it's good that I ha you know, am using my tractor, I'm also using diesel. So I did go out and uh, stop and buy five extra gallons of diesel when I was out. I felt pretty safe in doing that because we're out here in the country and the incidence of infection out here is very low. And when I went to the uh, gas station or the diesel station, I was the only one in there, me and the guy, and we stayed apart. And when I got out in the car, I washed my hands with the uh, hand sanitizer and brought the diesel home. And so I'm going to add more diesel. My tractor's pretty, pretty economical when it comes to, to diesel fuel, but uh, I just need to have some more because I'm doing more work at the home, which leads me to the one of the other things I discovered, and that's food. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that as your selection in food decreases, your desire for variety increases. And I noticed that this, I mean, we're eating well, don't get me wrong. We are not starving by any, by any means, uh, but you kind of crave more different things and, and one of the areas where I found myself is sweet and tart. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, um, basic, we'll just say country fixings, but I did develop a, a little bit more of a sweet tooth than I normally do and wanted some tart. And so as a, as a part of my thought process, uh, when we get this behind us, behind us, is I am going to learn to ferment food so I can get some of that kind of tart, you know, as my mother would say, schmeck, schmeck for it, the, the, the tartness of, uh, you know, pickled fermented foods. And we are going to keep more, more sweets on hand. Um, I don't need a lot of sweets, but I, you know, I, I, you know, I kind of craved a little bit of sweets. The other thing, is I'm going to learn how to make sausage and use that as a both as an everyday eating thing and as a um, food storage. You can can you can pressure can sausage, and so that's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm going to make sausage 
and then I'm either going to freeze it or I'm going to can it and then I'll have it and again it's just a little different taste uh, when you're craving more variety other than that everything is pretty much working the plan uh, no zombies uh, no you know no strange people roaming around it's been very peaceful out here I've had some contact with my neighbors mostly by phone everybody's okay we're kind of checking on each other my church groups were you know we're checking on each other and uh, everybody seems to be fine uh, we did try one of the things we did try was uh, home food delivery uh, stores like Kroger's and Publix and probably a few others for a small fee of about ten dollars somebody would go shopping for you and then bring it out to your house they drop it on the front porch and then they leave you pay for it online with a credit card. So there's there's like really no human contact. And what we did is after they left, we brought the food in the house, we packed it, put it away, and then we you know washed our hands, used hand sanitizer, whatever. We do keep hand sanitizer by the front door so we can kind of pump and go, so to speak. But uh, yeah. That's just a couple couple lessons learned. I mean, we had electricity, we had water. Did not expect that to go out, and it didn't. Um, I think things would have to get a lot, 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 lot worse before we start losing our infrastructure. It's been, it's we're pretty resilient. Um, and so that being said, that was really the the mainstay of, of what I was thinking about is. If you want to focus on something for preparedness, focus on food production. I mean, that's what we're doing here. We're getting our land cleared. Uh, then I'm going to buy probably a couple tons of lime and a couple hundred pounds of fertilizer. And I'm going to treat this land. And then I'm going to till it all under and then start growing a cover crop. And then use that cover crop, till it under, and then put another cover crop and get some organic material into my soil so that I can have better soil. I've got some, but I, I need to get some more. And then maybe I can start growing some things. But we did the hard part. I, I measured this the other day. This is about a half an acre right here and does not include the other side of the house where we'll probably have our blackberries and blueberries. And here will be uh, garden stuff. It'll be cover crop part of the year. Um, I think we're gonna put some bamboo way in the back and then some elderberry and some fruit trees and try to permaculture this a little bit. And so whatever stuff that we don't, I don't cut up and get rid of for pulp, we're going to uh, chip. We have a chipper shredder and we'll make pathways for the tractor and our UTV to go up and down so we can still tend our, our property. So that's really it. I just really wanted to check in and we're all well out here. Nobody got sick. Uh, you know, we all stay pretty, you know, we're, we're under, still under a lockdown and we're probably stay this way probably until the middle of April, uh, per the guidelines, per our county. And, uh, you know, we are, like I said, we are experimenting a little bit. Like I said, this home food delivery, while it's available, uh, seems to be working. It's a good. I think it's a good idea because it um, allows me to keep topping off my food, and that way, if all of a sudden one day they say we're not doing this anymore, well, you know, our tank is on full instead of half empty, so to speak. Uh, Security-wise, we did add some security cameras to the property. I've got one more to put up, which will probably be after this rain. Um, it's supposed to start here another hour or two and eh. <laughs> and it's supposed to rain hard and thunderstorms and such and so so that being said that's really all I got for this morning just to help give you guys some some things to think about so everybody stay safe and stay secure we'll see you